Um, welcome to this week's graphics for a programming virtual meetup. We follow the Berlin Code of Conduct. We have a Discord you should join, as well as a Twitter which you should follow. And this week's lesson is 6B. Um, the original name is 6BIS, and I don't understand why it's called that, but because B is a better name, we're calling it 6B, and it's about normal mapping in detail rather than in, in short. So as always, there's a link to the tutorial and my code for it. Um, what is a normal map? A normal map is a texture that contains normal data rather than it being a color texture or a diffuse color or specular or anything. It instead is, well, all the values in it represent directions, which is the normal direction. Um, the RGB values will are interpreted instead as X, Y, Z values. So a color of blue might be pointing one direction while the color of red might be pointing another, and there's different conventions. There's also different spaces that these normal maps can exist in. The two common ones are object and Darbo, or is it Darbo's? I'm not French. Someone correct me, please. Um, <laughs> So it's also Darbu. known as Darbu. <laughs> yeah, let's go with that. Darbu cause it sounds fancy. Uh, here's the two spaces in front of me. We have the object space, also possibly global space, but they're similar enough that I'm just going to lump them into one category. And then we have the Darbu space, also known as tangent space. So object space has the RGB values representing global directions. So the value of green would be the y coordinate, and that would be directly up. The value of red might be the, will be the x coordinate pointing directly to the x axis, and z being the z. I should make sure my hands are in frame. Um, and that's nice because it creates an intuitive mapping of color to normal. So if we look over here, we can see the head, the the blue, red, and greens parts are different colors and they represent different positions on the guy's head, um, where you can see the green pointing upwards or downwards, where in the red and the blue pointing in the different axis, like the Z, Z and X. Um, but the problem is that means it's very hard to scale and deform the mesh. Since those normals are pointing in a global space, if you scale the normal, then it's, not those normals are still an ob a no oh, object space and they're not going to be scaled with. I have a bendy ruler. Okay. Do I does my thing reach? Okay. I have a good visual aid and I, I like this for this purpose. So, like, you have this, this nice bendy ruler and you have your normal on it. When you bend the ruler, you intuitively think the normal is going to bend with it. The problem is with object space. That normal is attached to the surface, so when you bend it, it stays pointing vertical or whatever the direction actually is, which means you get wrong looking normals. The solution for this is using Darbo space, also known as tangent space, and it instead of storing the positions in a global frame of reference or local to the object, it stores them local to the triangle or pixels. And that's why the picture here is mostly blue because it's mostly pointing up and then there's a couple of perturbations on the x and the y or the z axis but most of the time it's pointing vertical or actually it's pointing in the or in the z axis and the x anyways uh, th those things can be altered as needed so the re reason to use darbo space is you can easily transform and scale not trans, uh, yeah, transform the mesh as needed. Um, to note, though, you can rotate both spaces just fine. Um, since object space is local to the object, it will rotate with it and not have a problem. Here's what is a little bit hard to tell, but if you look at the lips on the left guy, you can see that they're stretched out, but the normals aren't, they make it really dark. Whereas on the right guy is using the tangent space and it's good looking. So another benefit to using tangent space is that 
because it's local to the pixels, you can actually use the same data for multiple parts of the mesh. It's a bit hard to see here, but this is the UV, you know, the normal map for a dragon guy. And there is the tail or leg and the hand here. And it's harder to make out over here. But if you notice, there's only one hand. And that's because it's flipped for the hands, as in the left hand and right hand are simply the mirrored uh, inverse of it. But in object space, that won't work because it doesn't mirror it. it would use the same exact values but pointing on the wrong side. So it'd be like having two left hands, which doesn't work. So that's another reason to use tangent mapping is you can reduce the amount of texture space or yeah, textures needed. So how do we implement it? Well, we first need to have some visualization of what the UV space underlying the mesh is. And that's what these red and blue lines are there. The, "Quote unquote texel lines." If you drew a grid on the on the on the normal map, this is what would not the normal map, the texture map, uh, the UV space. This would be applied to it. But we also need to refresh our Fong shading because it's important to understand what Fong is doing to get to where we want to go. So I may not have mentioned this, but in normal mapping we are no longer interpolating a normal across a surface. We are reading the normal values from a texture. And that's useful so we can provide per pixel detail that doesn't exist at a triangular level. And it's, it's good, we talked about it last week in, in brief. But here we have Fong mapping and as you can see the three coordinates of the triangle, P1, P0, and P2, um, any individual point is going to be the interpolated uh, yeah, any individual points value in the triangle is interpolated from the surrounding three points. So that's the position, the UV coordinates, and the normals. So the normal you see here are the green triangles are the normals at each point, and the N in the middle is the interpolated value in the middle. And we can compute this using barycentric coordinates, as the equation here shows us, P equals alpha P0 plus beta P1 times, uh, I, I can't remember Greek. Gamma. Is that gamma? Okay. It's, it was like, it's not Charlie. It's the phonetic alphabet. Wrong alphabet. Um, so all three points are just, or all three, each point is an interpolated across the, the three other points. So the red and blue lines, they are UV axis and what we are going to want is to make that UV axis be our space, so to speak, where our Z axis will be the normal to that, not to that, but the vertical to that. And so I already explained that. Oops. Uh, most of it, it clears blue because our X and our Y axis are two of the three coordinates, but the one that is the most common, which is directly pointing upwards, is going to be represented by the Z axis or blue in this case. Um, so to actually implement tangent space mapping, we need to figure out the local basis at each pixel and then uh, use that to apply to our texture map so that we can sample from it correctly and apply that local to our current position which sounds vague now that they say it out loud. So <laughs> what we want to do is to imagine a linear function. So linear being a perfect straight line. And we can define that as a, a linear function for an X, Y, Z pair. And we want to and we can define that with the equation here, which is uh, ax plus by plus cz equals d, which is three numbers in a times the x, y, and z input plus the d, and that will give us our um, our output normal. We don't know what a, b, and c, and d are. That's why we're trying to figure it out, but 
and, and this is our change of basis between the input axis, uh, the normal axis, normal, and the um, I'm tripping over my own words. Some of these things make more sense intuitively than you know how to explain. And that's the difficulty I'm coming up with right now. Um, so we have <laughs> our function that takes x, y, and z and is equal to these four values added together. And we don't know what those four values are, but we do know what the values of those po of the corners of our triangle are. And so we're going to be able to use those as the source for what we want. If we imagine that our triangle is in fact a height map and the ISO lines are the gradient or the, the slope um, where there's constant height values, you can imagine like a topological topological map where these red lines represent the lines of equal height value. So the further we go from P0 here, we can imagine them increasing by one unit of, of sorts uh, up till we get to P1 or P2. So the gradient is the slope and the gradient for such a linear function and linear in three dimensions, not two, but it's still linear, so it's a straight line, if I understand correctly, is a constant vector, just ABC. So we don't know ABC, but we know the points uh, 0, 1, and 2, and we have the P0, P1, and P2 to use to compute it. Now, we should consider the function g as defined by p f of p minus f of p zero. So an arbitrary point p in the middle of the triangle can be defined as the point minus uh, p zero. And we want to turn that into a function based off the f arguments here. And so g of p is uh, the same as f of g minus f, uh, f of p minus f of p zero. And we can substitute all the coordinates in for that, where f of p would be px, py, pz uh, times a, b, c, d, which would be component-wise multiplication minus P0x, P0y, P0z um, component-wise with ABCD. And then we can factor out the subtraction of ABCD into their own thing. And we can turn that into a big old dot product between the difference between P0 and P, or the, the vector of P0 to P, and times these three whole values. So we can use these to construct a system of equations that show us what are um, that show us a relation between p zero p one and f f f one minus f zero and p zero p two, and they're all multiplied by a b c because it's orthogonal to um, to the normal. And now we can use that to create a matrix which we can easily use to compute ABC. If we notice it's of the form AX times B, we just simply inverse A or multiply A by its inverse on both sides. And so we get the ABC values is equal to the inverse of A um, times B, which is the F0, uh, F1 minus the difference between the three points on the outside. So, 
we can use this to compute the individual y and y, individual i and j values, which are going to be our basis or our, our coordinates into the basis. So now we just need to turn that into code. There's a, there's a lot of theory into something that's relatively simple mathematically. Um, where the top row is the difference between the um, tr uh, non device normalized coordinates of the triangle and the second is the the you know the x and the y values in device normalized coordinates and the last row is the normal at that point that's interpolated across the surface and so we just we use that to compute the inverse of it. We'll we use that and then invert it, and then we can multiply the UV values at each point to figure out where along the surface it'd be. And uh, if we apply it, we get this very nice handsome man with these very fancy normals that are correctly applied at a surface level rather than at a global or object level. And that is all that she wrote.